Well, it's 7.02. Um, I will call the Finance Committee meeting to order um, on Wednesday, July 26th. Um, with us in the room is Maury Creighton, Dean Hodges, Tom Parkins, um, Sarah Mellish Chair, Chuck Dam from the DPW is here, John Brown from the Select Board is here, and Craig Fetterspiel, Town Accountant is here, and Andrea Mainville is via Zoom, and Kathy Clive is via Zoom. Oh, it's usually uh, Erica. Oh, okay. Right, Sorry, that's not me. That's just editor. That sends everywhere. On enough of these meetings, you start to pick up on it. Three, four. So we have a quorum. Just barely. So I thought that tonight um, we would have Chuck just give us some information on some of the, the projects um, that are pending, um, information from the facility study, even though it's not um, finished yet. Um, and I thought that the um, purpose of this meeting, of the um, you know, I thought we would talk about the high points um, and then have, you know, questions, then we can ask questions. And um, the purpose behind this is to kind of get us to better understand what the forthcoming capital projects are um, so that we can better figure out a long-term capital plan. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chuck. I was going to have Andy lead it as he is, but he's not here yet. <laughs> Thank you. I'll share my screen. Uh, so hopefully, uh, this is just a very short, sweet PowerPoint on uh, things you just mentioned, Sarah. So. Uh, so thanks for our, thanks for having me in, and I uh, look forward to uh, some back and forth. But um, mostly, you know, following your agenda and some of the things that are on my mind, I thought topics we'd look at real quick are Central Street culvert, the PFAS situation, uh, facility master plan as you mentioned, wastewater treatment plant, which uh, I don't think we can really talk about capital without talking about that. And then, uh, you know, as a kind of holistic approach, as you mentioned, we wanted to talk about you know, town-wide assets and capital planning. So that's where we'll end up. Uh, so just real quick on Central Street Culvert, and uh, it also includes the pond restoration at this point. You know, we've been looking at this ever since I've been here, which is 2018 now. Uh, ultimately, at first, we were uh, waiting for funding. Um, it, you know, became quite a big project, multi-million dollar project, as you see here. So we were trying to get a couple of the big, big ticket grants for those projects. Uh, we ended up having to combine them for the purposes of grant applications to make them a better cost benefit analysis or, or anal analysts for the uh, different uh, funding agencies that were out there. So uh, we do have agreements with BRIC and NOAA at this point. So BRIC is a FEMA grant, NOAA is a, a different national uh, federal you know, agency. Uh, combined right now, we're, we're sitting on about $6.04 million dollars. Uh, you can see we have existing DOT grant for 500,000. Uh, we've so far appropriated, or we have left of existing town appropriations, 739. So far we've, we've expended three-ish hundred thousand in town funds for the various design and permitting efforts that we've gone through uh, over the past five years at this point. Um, right now, our opinion of probable construction costs is 7.2 million. So you can see 6.04 plus the one point. 239 and and we're about there. So, you know, I'll say, you know, combined, we're looking good. I'm not expecting to ask for more money. However, uh, you know, as we've seen in the last few years, uh, especially the, by the time we bid this, uh, we'll be looking at, you know, it's, it's really going to be up to the conditions at the time, whether it's inflation issues or just other uh, projects that, you know, contractors have. Because this is now a, you know, $7 million project, we expect to get some high level contractors 
that know what they're doing. So that'll be a benefit to the town. Uh, so our, our current schedule, um, we are still awaiting permitting. So I cannot stress enough that we've been waiting for this permitting for a couple of years now. And every time I think that the permit is coming, they, something happens. Uh, so right now, if we get the permit in hand in the next, say, month, like we expect to, uh, we will then go out to bid. So late fall, we will be doing the bidding practice. We'll, we'll take you know, probably six to eight weeks in this type of situation. Uh, we want to make sure we vet the contractors and have a process in place where we get the high qualified uh, DOT uh, qualified contractors to perform the work. Um, we will then want to award the contract in January. So if the bids come in under our appropriation and our uh, grant awards, then we should be able to award the contract in January. Uh, once we get that contractor on board, they're going to be submitting all their submittals to the town and our consultant for review. Um, that'll be a critical path item at that point. So, you know, right now, precasters, which we are envisioning this a precast concrete arch project, um, you know, those are six months out. So if any of this slips, you know, we, we could be seeing construction actually slip. Um, so that, that should be enough time. We expect it to be. So you can see January, they start doing all this work. They start submitting things to us. Uh, because of the permitting that we do have in hand, we know that the construction constraints we have once we have the contractor on board and, you know, our all, you know, our town initiative. So we don't want to start construction in the summer. Uh, we want to kind of get through that summer, come into fall. So say post Labor Day of, you know, fall of 24, we will let the contractor um, have the road basically, and they will be taking the bridge offline. Uh, and we've looked at several different ways of trying to maintain traffic, but really to meet the construction schedule that we're going to have, we need to let them have the whole road and let them get the work done, do their work in the stream that they're going to have to do all, uh, as I said, because of the permitting, it all has to be done in a certain timeline. We need to have the you know the contractor out of the water by early uh, winter. So that's why you see the, um, bridge out from September through winter of 25 so that they can be out of the bridge, out of the uh, uh, culvert channel uh, for you know spawning purposes in the spring and stuff like that uh, for the fish. <laughs> um, we also um, you know have utilities that need to be back in place. So uh, really we're looking for them to get that work done. Uh, that should be doable. That should be plenty of time. With any luck we'll be early, but it can never tell hurricane season this year or next year could put it out of the way. If we have a heavy winter, snow winter, you know, all of that stuff is going to factor in. So I, I don't have a crystal ball for that stuff, but, you know, all things considered, work to be complete June of 2025 at that point, and uh, the work is done. Um, so I'll, I'd like to move on from that, but, you know, that hopefully that answers any questions, but we can come back to it at the Randy's end. Randy's saying he can't get into the building. Uh, he can't what? Get into the building. Into the building? Where is he? <laughs> that looks like block and automatic. You got the stairs? I'll go, I'll go find them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Andy's seen this before. I'll, I can go, I can keep going without it. But uh, is there any questions on the culvert, real quick? Or um, you, is the 7.2 including the pond? Because you say TBD on the pond. Is that because it's a different type of contract? Or... TBD is just in terms of the bidding. So yeah. the, the, the costs are all inclusive of both okay. projects. We're not 100% sure right now if the agencies that are awarded us are going to let us bid just one contract. So one contractor does both, or at a minimum, the bridge will go first, and then we might just bid the bond separately at a later date. And that's not, so there's no constraints in terms of timeline. So therefore, it might be more advantageous to the town in terms of getting that work done on the street level before we go to the pond. So that's kind of, we have, a, we can kind of forge ahead best way we see fit on that. Um, so that's why it's TBD right now. It's so is is it possible that whoever bids on the bridge would not be the same? It would be a contractor that wouldn't be equipped to do the culvert. Yeah, so I mean the 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 bridge is much more specialty work. Um, we locked you out, Andy. Sorry. I, I, I said you've already seen most of this, so it's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so they. It's, it's a different level of contractor, but there's no reason that the contractor that does the bridge couldn't also uh, do the do the pond. It's likely they'd be a sub, or they would they would sub oh, that okay. out. But um, you know, it, it would be up to them at that point. 
Is there permitting through this project to like various permitting milestones or once you have all the permitting, are you basically just good to go right to the end or is it like- Yeah, so we have to get them in hand before we can start you know, the, the real physical work. And then there's uh, the follow up at the end, like- Yeah, so there are, there are constraints within all of those permits for doing the work itself, yeah. you know, dictating how we do it or you know, some terms of that the contractor will have to follow. So like you know, maintaining the street flow, you know, stuff like that is you know definitely part of it. So I have a um, suggestion about the, the deadline on load, road closure, uh, trying to avoid the cold weather concrete. Uh, consider like September through Christmas for the road closure, um, because that would avoid the cold weather concreting issues. Um, it's really a pretty small precast culvert. And if they do start early, you know, a bit early, that, that work should go pretty quick. Um, no, agreed. Um, yeah, that, that would be the you know, ultimate goal is to make sure that that all happens. If you write it in the contract, the, the contractors tend to bid optimistically. And like, but if you ask them to do it after they bid it, you'll get... Sorry, yeah, no, we, we certainly wouldn't dictate it after we did it. So yeah, that, so rather than through winter, it's by winter. It, it, but for the just oh, for the road. road closure portion. Yeah, like I said, I'm not I'm not trying to break down the schedule in this you know slide, but you know it's anticipated that you know when I say we give them the road plane, they're in there, everything is ready to come out, and they're ready to go back in. Right. And certainly, you know, like I said, we have other utility constraints. So if there's a national grid gas line in there that needs to be back on in November. So there are certain right. things that are going to lead them to have to do that. And those milestones are, will be part of the contract. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, that, that will be part of it. Okay. Question. Sure. And any uh, progress or update on alternate access while the uh, road's closed? So, you know, the, the detour will be up fine and pleasant in school. So that's, you know, there's no other detour. Our traffic will have to probably go up to 128. So we don't send them all down pleasant. <laughs> um, but the, um, the only other thing that we're trying to get uh, approved, and it, so that's part of our permitting right now with Chapter 91, is to do a pedestrian bridge. So mm -hmm. we might be able to get from behind Seaside 1 to the alley uh, across behind Boobert. Um, but we're still working with the abutters on that. We only own kind of half of that equation. Um, but that is you know, a goal for pedestrian access, at least. Process. Yeah. Okay. And another route might be um, off of Elm Street. Isn't there a right of way between? Uh, the two buildings by between, I only know it as Floyd's and Conti's copy, but, but there's, a, there's no way to cross though. Well, you'd have to cr build a oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, if we if we strike out, I mean, that's a little further away in terms of getting to the parking lot back down hall, which was our goal. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll, yeah, we can go up the stream you know, as far as we want. This, so for pedestrians yeah. from that side of town to the other side. Yeah, potential. Uh, that could be a fallback. So I'll just move on. I mean, we'll Any come back to that. questions on this? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to hit these ones real quick and then, you know, I'm sure we'll get into the weeds on other stuff, but so PFAS, um, you know, this is just a short timeline. We do have a page on the website where we can get into more detail, but so, you know, the, the state DEP uh, required us to start testing uh, in fall, uh, yeah, fall of 21. Uh, the MCL is at 20 parts per trillion for six different compounds without getting into the de There are hundreds of these compounds. There's, they're called forever chemicals. It's not, you know, it's not unique to Manchester by any means, but it, you know, it's everywhere. So um, we started looking at doing our testing. Uh, we did, you know, we have the two sources. We have Lincoln Tree Well, which is a separate source that pumps directly into the distribution system. We have Gravelly Pond Treatment Facility, separate source that pumps directly into the distribution system. We had to test both of them separately. So you can see the, the ranges on, and it definitely ranges over the course of this testing, uh, between 10 and 20 parts per trillion at Lincoln Street Well. So we were you know, very close to that threshold for the mass MCL. Uh, three to eight at Gravelly Pond is what we've been seeing. So you know, almost on the other spectrums, you know, pretty low, not, not in danger really of losing it. Uh, so in May of 22, uh, we finalized the concept for adding the treatment that we would be required if we were to go above the MCL uh, at Lincoln Street Well only. Uh, the price tag on that was, you know, give or take 10 million. Uh, you know, it's not cheap. We'd have to add building, filter vessels, structure. You know, it's, it's a whole 
It's a big, big engineering effort, trust me. Um, and so we kind of sat on that because we have been hearing that EPA is going to propose other ones. So mass DEP, separate entity than the federal EPA. Uh, so we, we had been waiting for EPA to give us kind of their guidelines. The whisper I was hearing was 10 parts per trillion. So basically cutting the mass MCL in half. It ended up being a lot different. <laughs> and they didn't finalize it until March 14th of 2023. So if you think about last summer, summer of 22, we're doing a nice big cleaning line project. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar on School Street, where we were, you know, and just coming out of COVID and there, you can't get pipe and inflation and yada, yada, yada. So we ended up doing that School Street project. I said, well, this School Street project is going pretty good. We have another pipe just like it on, Ple on Pleasant Street. Let's go ahead and clean the line that. So that's what made it into the budget, made it through the budget process all the way till, as we sit here today, it's part of my budget. The reason I haven't pulled the trigger because I did have that ready to go, you know, as of April town meeting, because in March, right before town meeting, the EPA decided that the limit was going to be four parts per trillion or individually for PFOS and PFOA, which as you can see, is right at the level where Gravelly Pond had been tested. So we didn't have anything in hand for what do we do for Gravelly Pond? So before we even got to town meeting, I had talked to the same consultant that looked at Lincoln Street and said, we need to know what we can do at Gravelly Pond. Do we end up building a pipeline from Lincoln Street up to Gravelly Pond so that we can treat everything, you know, add these vessels just at one location? Uh, or do we need to do two locations that have these vessels? And it's, it's probably gonna be the same at both. It's just a bigger vessel if we do more water at one versus the other. Right now, the breakdown is roughly 60% Gravelly Pond is town source, 40% Lincoln Street well. We, we do go back and forth. So, that, you know, there's different parameters that we're testing for and treating for at each, but long and short of it is, you know, if we put them all together, you know, maybe that, maybe that would be advantageous. So I do have memos in hand for looking at that, um, you know, just to add treatment at Gravelly Pond, probably in the $16 million range. So, you know, like I said, bigger vessels than what would be at Lincoln Street, but, you know, say ballpark. Uh, the big question now is how much is a pipeline to go from Lincoln Street up to Gravelly Pond? Uh, probably about 10, 11 million. Maybe we can get it a little bit cheaper if we, uh, you know, I, I have some thoughts on that. I won't get into it right now, but there are, there are other alternatives out there that we could, we could look at. But long and short of it is this PFAS situation is going to probably end up being you know, $25 million project by the time we're all said and done. Now, you know, maybe we could just do Gravelly Pond first and then do Lincoln Tree and vice versa. And, you know, but, in, in the very short term, so once EPA's limits go into effect, what is that? We're look, uh, so right now it's I'm not sure the term for it, but you know they they promulgated their regular or they've oh, it's out for they, comment. they put them it's out. out it's out for comment. It's expected that December or January this year or or early twenty four, they would uh, promulgate those regulations and they would we'd have three years to get into compliance. Um, just to do the upfront work, bench testing, pilot testing for the different medias and uh, different you know, parameters, whether we combine the water or separate the water, you know, all of those things. You know, we're looking at a you know, 12 month process to do that because we need to do it during all seasons and we need to get that data before we can really finalize the design. Then as you can imagine, this is an EPA federal regulation. So there's gonna be every, literally every water system the United States is going to be after this same activated carbon, these same vessels, these same contractors that are doing this specialty work. So there's no escaping that you know, it's just going to drive everything uh, you know, through the roof. But um, that's that's where we're going to be. Um, so we'll have three years from 20, you know, say early 24, so somewhere in 27, um, which you know, if you gave me the money right now, I'd say I don't know if I can make that deadline. Uh, but you know, obviously we need to go through the you know, the rest of the process before we even get there. Um, so it's, it's going to be tight and I don't know that we'll make it on time. I'm sure there will be other people in the same situation. So um, we did, you know, we do know, you know, that $25 million price tag is, you know, probably about right. We do know that we are part of, you know, litigation for the people that make this stuff and we will be awarded something, but it's not going to be 25 million. And, you know, there's lots of money out there for these things, but like I said, we're competing against, we're in the same bucket as everybody else. So I, I don't see, you know, we're asking 100% loan forgiveness or anything like that on this type of stuff. And 
but you know, how many loops for this different than uh, the culvert? Uh, yeah, so, you know, the, the culvert is, you know, in a national waterway, so we have Army Corps in Chapter 91 is really what's driving that. Uh, we will have permitting, but it's more routine permitting that you know, we do every day as a course of, you know, implementing treatment processes and added, adding these processes. Presumably, we also have the ability to kind of separate the scope so that you're doing the pipe and you separate. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I, you know, I think that, you know, that's probably you know, at least one of the pass forward is where we're doing the testing and, you know, finalizing the design at, you know, whether it's at one or both of the facilities and then the pipe in between is getting built as that's going on. And then, you know, at some point we started up the opposite place. Is, is there any other advantages to having a pipe like for added capacity? Or anything like that? Or so it's, just, it's strictly going to be a raw water pipe. So it's the cost of the pipe versus the cost of two separate facilities versus one. Yeah. So I think, you know, we are, you know, my comment back to the engineer once they gave us the, the initial round of data was we need to do a life cycle cost because, you know, this spent carbon is going to be something that, you know, might be handled differently than, you know, other processes. So over the course of 20 years, it might make a huge difference what that looks like. Um, so there's lots that's going to have to kind of. Is it the same activated carbon vessel, depending on whether it's 15 parts per million or, or three that we're trying to? It's well, so the, re the reason we do the pilot testing up front is to know what kind of run rate we're going to get through the media right. with our exact you know, parameter. So, yeah. you know, like I said, 10 to 20, 3 to 8, those kind of things. What if we blend it all at one site? It's going to be different. Um, yeah. There's other things that's going to get caught in this you know, filter media besides PFAS. Right. So you know, there's a lot that goes into it. So what happens to the 1.8 million authorized for Pleasant Street? I was going to wait till the end to answer that question. I don't, I don't know that that's my decision, but I, you know, I have thoughts. But uh, I, I, maybe I, I come back to that you know, after spending a little time with Chuck. I do think that the concept and the discussion around how we, you know, treat allocations you know, for DPW, given the variability of how their projects can actually be executed. Is something we're talking about maybe on its own. Okay. So, Jen, other, yeah, so question. So, whether you go <laughs> with just one treatment location or two treatment locations, it sounds like the monies involved are about the same. Capital costs can be 20 to 25 million, whichever whichever way you go. Like, yeah. So, one other uh, the Lincoln Street well location sounds like a good opportunity to get rid of that green building issue that we have. Maybe put a, the filtration plant there or something. Uh, I don't know. It was the old water department headquarters, I think. So home stations on the other side of the brook. Is that what you're talking about? The brick building? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it might be a, you know, we don't know what the heck to do. I, so actually, it's a, I did have them look specifically at that for the treatment building, but yeah. it's not. It's not high enough for. No, it would have to be demolished and well, yeah, yeah, so yeah, potentially. But yeah, yeah. And remediated and everything, but it's a time bomb net bomb. Yeah. So yeah, you revisit that. But yeah, as as it stood, it didn't work. If I was hoping that would save me half a million. Right, I see. So yeah. you have a sense of how many other communities, um, say in Essex County or North Boston, are in the same boat we're in? I mean, are we an outlier, or are we one of? 371 communities are we one of 360 <laughs> well so that's still may define the timeline a little here right. yeah so mwra got a pass so i don't I, i'm sure they've tested it and i'm sure they say it's zero or near zero so i don't think mwra in any mwra community is how many communities from that 20. no uh, one more. quite a few oh, okay. most of eastern mass it's, it's, yeah yeah there's several and so they, there is, so I have been sitting in, so full disclosure, I am a water commissioner in Wenham now, where, where I live, but also as representing Manchester before I was in that role on Senator Tarr's task force. So that task force has been looking at uh, several different alternatives for, and this is before the PFAS issue, this is just for Ipswich River Basin mm -hmm. issues. So Wenham, Hamilton, Topsfield, Sam Beverly, you know, on and on. Um, so they, um, generally are in the same boat. I will say, you know, Hamilton already has these granular activated carbon. The problem is Hamilton doesn't have any water to pump through them. So that's, you know, one issue. Um, but, you know, so yeah, most most cities and towns that have their own supply or uh, whatever are in this situation. You know, and there are several that have already built this stuff because they were over the 20 parts per troll. Yeah. 
and Beverly probably have this. So I'm not sure exactly where they say. I, I'm guessing almost everybody is going to be over the four because that's just a ridiculous limit. Right. But I don't. So I don't know specifically. But I know you know we were we were kind of in the normal range of we have it. It's not above twenty, but we'll see. And then EPA just came out and said, well, everybody's saying that. And and I would assume in the comment period they might receive comments regarding the timeline. We might push it out. Timeline in the, in the special. Yeah. And those are the two variables. Yeah. Because yeah. it's three it's years. Very so that was very it's very tight. Yeah. yeah. Well, keep in mind, there's lots of, you know, Massachusetts was uh, kind of the forefront of installing their MCL anyway. There are other states out there that didn't have this on the radar. Right. So you know, I'm sure they're going to be you know, screaming foul. Yeah. But, but I mean, if you, if you look at the magnitude of this problem, let's say there's 150 communities in Massachusetts and they're all looking at spending 25 million. I mean, that's a humongous amount of, I mean, would they ever think about just giving every household a charcoal filter? So, and, you know, to do it at the point the of use. The answer is no, uh, because the couple different maintenance going on. So, you know, um, if you're one of those people that, you know, this is similar to what's in your refrigerator filter, if you right. have a dispenser at home, but, you know, when that light goes off and says, uh, you know, I, I'll wait till next month, you know, yeah, when, I, when I pick it up. Yeah. But like, so they're, they're looking at it from a health, you know, public safety yeah. health right. point of view. And they're not willing to let somebody just say, I'll wait a, you know, yep. wait a month, you know. It's like lead pipes. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I've thought about that. And, you know, there is an argument to be made, except it will not matter because our water system is regulated where it goes into the pipe, not where it goes into your house or at so, your town. More questions on this? Two slides in. Would, would it be, would we be able to retrofit or something in gravelly pond treatment to accommodate this at a lesser cost, or is it something that would need a whole new building? Like, could we take the fluoride treatment part and convert it into a PFAS filter or something like that? No, so the, there's just not the, these filters are going to be in addition to the filters we already have there. Um, so you know, there's no, there's no getting these size filters in the existing system. footprint. Yeah. We did look at utilizing there is garage space there. We didn't look at utilizing that, but we'd still have to have a building because we need the pump station. So that would, it would, the garage could house the filters, but not the intermediate pumps that we need. Right. So, and we need, a, we need a wet well basically to pump the raw water into the wet well to be pumped through. You know, the, there's, a, there's a lot. Of I know we're going long on this, but the challenge here, it seems like gravelly, um, the Lincoln Street well, it, it, is it possible to build another well closer to gravelly pond? And just, I mean, when you start looking at this much money, a lot of different things come up to possibility. So the, the issue that I have with that is time. So this is something that, you know, we, we had looked at it. The task force is very interested in this. They spent a lot of time on it. And so I tried to tell that was one of their suggestions as well. And I'm not against trying to permit or uh, you know, get a new source online, but the timeline is not going to work. Uh, it will take several years and believe it or not, maybe not 10 million, I can look at it a little closer. It will cost millions of dollars to get right. a new well source online. And so one of the things that I've been struggling with, right now we have a pretty good system where we have redundancy between the well and the pond. And you know, something that affects the pond doesn't necessarily affect the well. Right. And so this is kind of losing that. And so, I'm, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility that even with a life cycle cost analysis, where it favors doing treatment just at one, where we might say, well, it's close enough, where let's keep the redundancy. Um, because in a time of drought or extreme emergency, we could shut one off and still supply the town with potable drinking water. Um, but if we put all of our eggs in the gravelly pond basket, we lose that. <laughs> and not for nothing, there are two landfills right next to Gravelly Pond. So PFAS is one thing. There are other things. Yeah. Um, you know, so you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that route yet. Could you stage it? Meaning, do one and then then the next one. So again, we, so there's no drought. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that, it all comes down to like you know, last year we had the drought. People were responsive to turning off the irrigation and you know stuff like that, and we would. We would have been able to get by probably one of them. The well is definitely a wild card yeah. where you know, I wouldn't want to do it unnecessarily. I wouldn't take that like, um, and there would have to be a lot of outreach to make sure we can make it, but it is, it is possible.
does each source have to get tested individually for the PFAS uh, level or is really just um, measured at the outflow of the pumping station? And I'm getting to the angle of blending two and getting a number that's low as opposed to, which, which may happen in some instances. So, so before they made it four, that was another thought that we had. I have, I have a memo. I, if anybody wants any more background, don't want to take my word for it. I have the, we have done the work. Yeah. Um, and so we did look at that and we did look at blending. At 20 parts per trillion, we might be able to do it, but not at four. I understand so, four is really yeah. tough, but the comments. And then, so, you know, this is just strictly from an engineering exercise point of view. There is a little element, it's probably not little. There is an element of this that we haven't discussed, which is, is any amount of PFAS safe? You know, we get this at public meetings all the time where, you know, even if, even if we got to a point where we had 20 was the MCL and we treated Lincoln Street to a, a zero level, which is what will happen once we add these filters, um, you know, that still means there's some PFAS up at Gravelly Pond and, you know, that water is going into the distribution system. So, you know, that is an element that you know, is outside of the numbers and outside of the room is, you know, is that an appropriate way for us to advance these projects? So we, we did look at that, but it's hard to, first of all, it doesn't work at this level. Second of all, it's more of a you know, public relations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought they had to test them at each source. But so we, we do test them at each source, but the only place that the MCL comes into effect is point of entry into the distribution system. So right now we have two points of entry, like a tree, probably pond. So if we were to combine them, we could blend it. At the standpipe, is that where you would test the blended? No, we, wherever it pumps in. So in, in that scenario, Wincon Street is going up to Gravelly Pond. We're pumping in at Gravelly Pond. So we're essentially the treated value of the blended water is what we would be reporting. Anything else on PFAS? Okay, let's move on to the facility stuff. Great. So uh, as Sarah said, uh, we do have a draft in hand. Um, I'm reviewing it. Um, we got it. Um, so, you know, this started a few months ago now. Um, I'll say, you know, we, we've done the tour, we've done GIS analysis of, you know, parcels available in town, town owned parcels. You know, we were setting out on, you know, a mandate to try and what I'm calling, you know, find a silver bullet. Unfortunately, there is no silver bullet to be had uh, in terms of facilities in this, in this town. So, you know, where we're kind of basing our recommended plan on, like I said, there was a lot that went into it. There was a lot of thought uh, and hope that we could, you know, find something somewhere that hadn't been, you know, looked at, you know, in the recent past. There, I will say, there has been thoughts about this back to at least 2008, where we have a report, a couple of reports since then, you know, different levels of effort that were involved in those. And so, you know, where we've ended up, and keep in mind, coming into this, you know, over a year ago, we had, a DPW siting analysis already in the in hand. Going back five years, we had a siting analysis in hand for School Street versus Upper Pine Street for a compost facility. You might remember that where the current compost is at School Street, there was a thought at one point to making that where we put the compost building. We did a siting analysis of that versus the dump, the transfer station, and decided to put the school street uh, compost facility there to co-locate it with the transfer station, which makes a lot of sense from a lot of different points of view, and then maintain that parcel on School Street as you know a town-owned property. It's really the only town-owned property that's worth anything in terms of vacant facility that isn't you know under some sort of conservation restriction or you know has a roadway abutting it. There's lots of town property; it's all landlocked. There's no roads. Um, so, like things like that are what we were looking at when we were going through this facility master plan. So ultimately the siting analysis that we have for DPW looked at staying in place on Pleasant Street, moving to School Street. Um, you know, we had that in our back pocket, but that was not what we looked at when looking at facility plan. We were looking at you know, all town facilities. So just wanna make that, that clear. Um, you know, there is a thought that maybe the public safety could go at School Street. Um, it's certainly big enough. Uh, it's kind of at the outreaches of town. So there's other sort of thoughts that it wouldn't be an ideal spot for public safety. Um, in terms of the other facilities that you see here, it's not, you know, it's not a town hall, it's not a COA, it's not like, you know, so it's, it's really one of those two. And it seemed that the, from a logistics point of view, building a new DPW at School Street 
relocating public safety to a co-facility at Pleasant Street at some distant time in the future is the next shoe to drop. Then you, your public safety right now is we just did finish the CDM resilience study, study. The police uh, garage, the fire garage are all underwater in 20, 30 years. So something has to be done on that time horizon anyway. Um, so moving them, not trying to renovate their existing facilities is you know, more of a, I think, win for the town or you know, that was the thought process and as laid out in the master plan. So um, they did apply numbers for certain things. So you know, like I said, we'd already done a site analysis for DPW. So you know, it's based on a lot of different things. You know, our personal program that we would need, whether we we stay in the same spot or we relocate. So that's where that 22 million figure comes from. Uh, we also have public safety. Uh, you know, numbers. It, there was one that was just completed in Essex, but they actually in the report have several uh, different facilities that they looked at and applied square footage formulas and things like that for you know ones in Massachusetts that have been built in the last decade, uh, some more recent than others. Um, so that would include kind of the you know inflation factor that we've seen over the last few years. So that's kind of in there. Once once those uh, uh, projects are completed, then you know now we have a lot of space at Town Hall uh, that was police department that now is freed up for other uh, services uh, who are relocating other programs. Um, so you know, there's different uh, you know, benefits to that. Uh, they did assign a figure to that. That's the 5.2 number. So that it was like renovations rather than yep. rebuilding. Yep. Could, could I ask the, sure. the idea that um, you know, police and fire are not uh, great in great spots long term, given the sea level rise? Um, this, outside the purview of this particular study, I assume, but. Doesn't that then affect all the properties that are in, a, in that area of town? The character of the town changes at that point, but all those properties necessarily apply. So, which uh, do, you, do you mean the, the well, facilities the that were facility. vacating, or do you mean the surroundings? So, the idea that uh, the fire department is not a viable spot is it not viable because at the lower level only and the rest of it is fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, for instance, you know, there's a town hall generator that you know, has sandbags around the fire station, same thing. Uh, they have, you know, we have pictures from this past December where they were trying to get at apparatus in the garage, but they, you know, they were basically pulling it out of two feet of water, uh, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, don't get me wrong. It's not just the, the, you know, the sea level rise. It's more, or it's, it's also, and this might be, you know, 50, 50, if I were counting it up, but, you know, their current footprint, is not adequate for their current program. Current program. Too many apps. So there's too many, you know, like right now, the you know, the evidence room is in a cell or the, you know, their you know uh, other uh, evidence room is you know in the uh, same place where the you know the breakers are for you know the, the entire building. So like there's just things that are not the norm. And then that doesn't even take into account the you know women's and men's separated facilities for their locker rooms and stuff like that. Uh, the, the fire department doesn't have that. So these are things that, you know, 50 years ago when these places were built, probably made a lot more sense, but not in today's current code and you know, environment. What about all the space behind town hall? That's a huge lot. Um, it seems to me that one could put a building there, raising it up as appropriate, um, and use that for some, you might be able to put a public safety building. Well, so the issue then would be the access during an actual emergency where you're using this facility. That would, that would work probably, you know, 11 months out of the year, but then you get a hurricane and, you know, you're stuck on the police department island, you know, so that it's not, it's not technically feasible in that, you know, sense. Um, would would um, School Street be big enough for public safety and DPW? Not with our current programs for each. Correct. Um, okay, uh, Kathy Bellata. Hi, sorry, I was having a little trouble hearing um, when you guys were talking about the assumptions around town hall. Were you suggesting that those were renovations and town hall would stay in its current footprint? Um, that was question number one. And then question number two, 
um, what were the assumptions that were made for the um, space needed, footprint needed for town hall? Uh, so I, I didn't get into that level of detail. Um, so I guess to answer the first question, the, it was in terms of renovating the existing footprint, not, not adding additions or building up or anything like that. Um, because, you know, like I said, we, we would free up the space at that point, a DPW office would be relocated, a uh, police and fire, or in this case, police would be relocated. So we would be looking at the first and second floor for permanent space. And then the, the idea is that at some level, the basement would be functional space, except in times of, you know, high storm surge or, or the like, you know, we would, it wouldn't necessarily need to be flood proof, but it'd have to be <laughs> flood resistant. So, you know, types of thing, you know, you wouldn't put critical documents or anything like that in a storage down there, but you could make it, you know, a rubber floor space that's, you know, available for different functions. Or so that, that's what I was kind of getting at, though. Um, you know, certainly um, our public safety professionals have a lot of unique equipment, right, and scenarios that, um, you know, are part of their requirements for their facility. But town hall is pretty administrative, right? And when you think about those types of operations in the future, they're much more reliant on technology and less on paper. So I just, as we go down the road, trying to figure out what the real requirements are for town hall, I hope we're considering um, how we might be working differently 10 or 20 years from now, not needing as much storage for paper documents, because you can either do that offsite or everything might be electronic. So there's other ways of working. And I just want to make sure we're taking that into consideration and not just building a footprint based on how we work today. Yeah, so I, I think that, like I said, I don't, they weren't uh, providing, you know, build out scenarios necessarily, but I'll, I'll take a closer look at that. Yeah, when you think about all of the, um, you know, this is the reason why a lot of the office buildings in, in Boston are empty, right? People are working differently. And when companies are revisiting their facilities needs, I, I, I did a lot of this work myself at my, in my prior life. Um, they're really thinking about how people work differently and the footprint that is required, especially for administrative heavy roles is much smaller. And companies are saving a lot of money by moving to a smaller footprint um, as opposed to just duplicating what they currently have. Well, yeah, so I think the assumption is that based on just that kind of thinking, we don't need a bigger town hall. That this, the, the, the two floors here, long term, we assume are adequate. Well, I, and I'm saying even something different, Greg. I'm saying not only that, but you might not need the space that you have if you start to reimagine how you might work town hall differently. There are some, you know, some organizations are moving certain services to their customers. So some towns are trying mobile town halls or, you know, you like I said, you don't have as much paper around you in the future. So you might not need as big a footprint as you think you need. So, or you may be me, you know, maybe you just need a, the footprint to reflect a little bit um, of, a, of a different layout less office space more collaboration space so i just wanted to throw that out there not to get into too too much specifics right now but um if you can even keep the town hall uh, um footprint the way it is it it might be used very differently um which could save us from building another facility for a different need um and and reduce reduce the cost overall so i just think i just think we need to think about future not current state. That's kind of Let, let's hold off on this discussion until we have the, the final facility study. I don't want to get into a huge amount of detail tonight to rework it all. Okay, thanks. All right, and I'll just I'll just hit on the rest real quick, but point taken, Kathy, and you know others. You know we we'll make sure we answer those questions. Um, so COA, uh, this is something that 
is a little bit outside of uh, the facility master plan because I know you know Greg's having ongoing discussions with certain folks. So you know this is just kind of a placeholder uh, for that. But you know, you know that would also be sort of a functional space, uh, you know, more gathering space than administrative. Say um, library. I think you know this was brought up at the last meeting, but you know they their their site is good. They don't have the resiliency issues that most people have. There is a you know question of you know there's certain programs that they're not offering that they want to. There's certain uh, amenities that they need that they don't have. The ADA bathroom being the one I think that was discussed last time. I was like you know we did give them alternatives for that and they just don't really like them. So you know they're still trying to chew on how they can make their existing space work because I think they all want that. But you know we so we haven't been able to really put a firm number on that or a firm plan in place. Uh, but it's out it's out out there as a need. Uh, Harbor Master, again, this is uh, another study that, you know, was relocating Bion's office to a more waterfront office. I know that's been discussed and uh, there's different alternatives that we've discussed in the past, but um, so I want to make sure that was known in this, in this uh, setting. Uh, and then the Rotunda, which, you know, is obviously in progress. Um, you know, the alternatives that are before us right now, two to four million, there'll be another meeting tomorrow night, and then, you know, we'll be pushing that forward. Um, I'm not sure what the funding options are. I know there's at least a lot of it will be grant, but there will probably be down dollars that are needed as well. So, so this master plan will that have a prioritizations in it? Yeah. So what they're they're trying to lay out like the program going forward. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm trying to hit the highlights of right here. Uh, there was a you know that's not you know getting into every detail that we try to get to that's contained within the report. Yeah. Um, so, you know, lots of things were vetted at various levels with, like I said, with respect to available parcels, you know, even some that aren't market rate parcels, there was all sorts of analysis that was done. Uh, it's just, it's just really hard. There's just not a lot. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're not pushing forward on one thing until we have the whole plan. Have a yeah, so that, this contract. is trying to be the entire like plan. Like the COA, I mean, why should that be done now, you know? sort of thing that sort of thing i think you need to look at well i think you know coming into the facility plan you know that's a, a snapshot in you know time now looking forward but there was also certain things that were in motion before we decided to do a master plan right so we don't want to discard those just because we had the plan but certainly the plan needs to be final before you know yeah. something bigger happens uh, but so i think that's how we look at it um so then the wastewater treatment plant is uh, near and dear to my heart. I'm sure you've all um, we all appreciate it. Appreciate it to <laughs> some level, but so do you know what it is? <laughs> we all know it. Um, so you know, we we've been uh, you know trying to put away money in previous budgets since I've been here, with the anticipation that we would save up some money. And obviously, we have certain things that we have to address as they as they happen. Um, but you know. What we're, what we're looking at in the very, very short term uh, is a three to $4 million upgrade that addresses some of the existing needs that we have today, while also doing some amount of work, waterproofing and floodproofing us for the future. But long-term, that site is not viable in its current state, no matter what we do in the short term. So I just wanna, you know, there are, um, you know, we, we've been looking at the long-term resiliency as part of the CZM grant. We've looked at uh, sending our flow to Glosser or Beverly or relocating. Like, so we, we've looked at all of these things, but from my perspective and from a capital planning perspective, we need to start now so that 20 years from now, we are having a ribbon cutting at a facility that's pumping off site somewhere, uh, or we're you know, building a berm that's 20 feet tall around the plant. Just the plan. Like I'm not trying to save the adjacent buildings or town hall or the garage back. You know, th so this is this is where we're at in our current situation with the plan. So I just want to you know make that clear. There there are certain things that we have to do now. We have to get the plant water system back online. We have to clean and uh, replace all the clarifier equipments, the sweeps that go around that give us our treatment. Uh, we've we've had those offline since I've been here. All the metal is, you know, 20 plus years old from a, you know, saline environment, you know, right on the ocean, taking a beating every day. Um, so like these things have to be done. So that's, that's where we get the, 
three or four million. So. And, I, and I think where we're headed is instead of accumulating a little money each year is to understand what the real cost is and kind of attack the whole thing. Yep. Um, have it prioritized and, and kind of attack it rather than yep. just, you know, putting stuff aside because I certainly think there's a point where it makes more sense to upgrade some stuff rather than. Yep. And so, yeah, we have a question is, I mean, the 20 years, I mean, what is all these items you talked about? What's the kind of time frame this might get implemented over? I mean, is 20 years a number? Is it 30 well, so, years? Is it so, what, so sewer plant, that's in the next two years. The three to, so the three to four million. Three to four million okay. needs to be spent in the next couple of years. And then, you know, the, like I said, the 20 year goal is to be doing a ribbon cutting where we've now spent some amount of money, tens of millions relocated. So, so the information so, we're going to want is not the 20 years, it's when the project would need to start, get it completed when you think it needs to be done. So the three to four million will buy us another 20 years at this point. Okay. Okay. Barring the hurricane that likes it. Yep. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. So these are, these are parallel activities of doing the work to maintain the functionality of the current plant while we're also then planning for the, the long future. We need to be planning for 2045 when we have a different solution to sewage. Either a, a, a new town, a, a plant someplace else in town, and we finally got some agreement with our neighbors to pump, pump them. Or we protect. Existing location. Build an island. Yep. Protect them. I mean, it's not just as easy as putting a 20 foot wall around three sides and letting the, the railroads always going to stay above the water. You know, they'll do what they have to. But it's also I, providing. I wish I, wish I could take that to the bank. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, 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 well, I think they would want to keep the railroad open uh, in sea level rise. Uh, the I don't know if they're going to make it this far out. Yeah. yeah this is not. This is the ridership saying. that we're generating, um, yeah, so, so. beyond Salem, I don't know if they're going to do that. They've got so many. I mean, again, it's prioritization. Yeah, Beverly, yeah. right? Beverly is pretty good. Yeah, that was a decent size. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess again, where I'm coming from, I think, as you know, like I said, the three or four million you know have to happen to get us to 20 years, but we cannot afford to wait 10 years to start building the hundred million dollar solution. On the hopes that you know the MBTA is going to you know get there in twenty, like that's just not going to be the way this works. Um, you know, this is going to take several. You know, the permitting for Central Street has taken me five years. That we're talking about that level of permitting effort to get this going. So yeah, we're concerned about when you have to fund the project. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with and, you. And me too. figuring out all of the projects that need to be done and when we need to fund them. Not necessarily the pre work of permitting. Right, but that, but that, that, will be, that will be a dollar number. Yeah. That's real dollars. And right. We need some decisions yeah. as to which direction we want right. to go. Right. That's the real challenge. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think we can put a pin in that. I think I made my point, but like this is, you know, this is definitely something that is coming in less than 20 years that will be needed to be programmed into you know, this capital planning going forward. So, so, so the plus and the Talked about a seawall around the plant for about seven and a half million, maybe five million. Yeah, but that was a, how big it was. I guess is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's you know there's several you know different cuts at it that would you know make sense. We we have not done that that homework yet at a more strategic level. So just thinking, I mean, we obviously are tasked to look at all this through the lens of money. Right. And I've been adding up what here. <laughs> so if we look at the PFAS problem is 25 million, we look at DPW, town hall, police, all that at 55 million. And we look at Essex Elementary at about 30 million. And you add all that up, you're at about 110. And then you throw another 50 to 100 on a sewage treatment plant. Now you're, you're coming up to 200,000 or two, two, 200 million. And you know, you divide that by 
2,500 roughly households in Manchester, it's about 80,000 per household. That's a big number. I mean, that's going to take some work and selling. <laughs> but, but I, think, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen all at once, but even divided by 20 years, you know, 80 by 20 is $4,000. You know, we're, we're, we're rumbling along a capital of three or four million a year. Well, and that's why that's, we need, this is a different that's why we need the big plan. So, so I see two different capitals here, right? So you've got your annual capital of, right. in the $4 million range. We keep doing that. Uh, that probably needs to grow to five or six. You, yeah. you know, over time, that needs to grow to five or six million. Right. And on the other, the other bucket are the big bonded projects, right? right? So those, that's where... The, the 200 million is. Yeah. So those are two different. Right. Those are two different buckets. Right. And that would be that would be debt, probably for 20 or 30 years. So you have debt service on it, but it spreads it out, which is. Well, it's, we it's also still need, a big number. We also it's need a better. A huge number. We need a better handle on the short term numbers too. So uh, right. instead of just. Uh, like, we can keep keep going. Going. Okay. okay. Um, wait a minute. Kathy Bellotta has a hand raised. Just, just a quick comment. I, I think what, um, you know, what would be very helpful for the select board as we're asked to make some of these decisions are two things. One is, um, I think what you're poking at is the timing, Chuck, of when decisions have to get made. So what decisions have to get made by, you know, what's the drop dead date for making certain decisions? So that we can keep these things on track. I think that would be very helpful for the select board to know. And then also from the finance committee um, perspective, what, what I think we'd appreciate is an understanding of what where should we perhaps look at unique areas of funding for some of these projects, like fundraising. You know, we've had some feedback from residents. Um, on the rotunda, well, let's do a GoFundMe, you know? <laughs> so it's it's where the funding can come from many different sources, not just taxation. And I, I think it would be helpful for the select board to get some advice from the finance committee on what some of those other asset classes, if you will, might be and, and what they might look like as we go forward with the plan. Thank you. So Go ahead, John. Yes, I, I just want to follow up on the uh, sewer plant discussion before we get into the, when you said you got more stuff, you know, I can do the general issue, yeah. Um, I know that a couple of months ago, you found that the sewer plant was using a lot of water. Is Where, where, where is that in your head in terms of being able to recycle the water there as opposed to using, what, four or 5% of the Watt Town's consumption is going to the sewer plant? So the, that's the plant water system, the number one board. Oh, it's there. Yeah, right there. Next slide. Part of the that's, the, that's, part, that's part of the short term. Okay. Okay, so that's included in that. Yep. Oh, okay, fine. Yep. Not an issue. And that's the leak, remediating leakage. No, no, no. So right now we have what they a plant water system. So the, the water that we make at the wastewater plant after we go through all the process yeah. and ship it out to the harbor yeah. is I wouldn't call it drinking water water grade, but it is good for other parts of the process, the treatment right. process. That system has been offline for seven predating me. Um, and I didn't realize that it was actually counting against us. It counts against us what? It counts against us on our drinking water number, the yeah. number that we're pumping into the, <laughs> right. you know, from yeah. the well and the pond. Municipal but it also oh. counts against us because we're that much extra water is going out to the the L farm, right. which is where we're regulated and permitted there. Yeah. So you know getting that system back online from not only a you know, just strategic point of view, but like you know it just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But so you know things like Washing down the spraying down the aeration tanks, playing down the clarifiers, uh, other places where we need makeup water in the process, like all of that stuff is what is currently being used by the same water feature. How could you see that three or four million dollar package as something that we could that would be up to the one twenty five? My world, absolutely. Uh, right now, so we, like I said, in the top there, we have a basis of design. Yeah. My plan would be, you know, we, it's just a draft right now. We're portraying some things to try and get it in the three or four million dollar range and stay there. Um, again, this is going to be another big ticket project where we're going to have you know lots of competing interests, but also you know inflation, you know supply chain, all those things are going to come into play for this one. 
Um, so, you know, that, that's, my, that's my plan. Um, we'll finish the basis of design. Uh, then we'll go to a formal design, which I have money in the existing budget for that. So I don't need to go to another town meeting to be able to, you know, get that going or, you know, hopefully get it done. Uh, it's probably a six to 12 month design, you know, from there. So, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be right in that kind of framework, but I would, I would love to be able to have that money ready to go next town meeting FY25 so that we could uh, put it out to bid, evaluate the bids, get the contractor or not, not be waiting around till, you know, FY26. Okay. So those are the, you know, big ticket items that I think Sarah had on her agenda. Um, I just wanted to, these next couple of slides are just kind of showing you like breadth of the things that we're thinking about from DPW. So on the capital side, you know, we have the infrastructure, we have amenities, we have facilities. I put it off to the side there, fleet, because I feel like that's department, department specific, but you know, that's another capital thing that I know you guys think about. Um, so under you know, that kind of framework, then we start really drilling down. And so under infrastructure, you know, we have all of these different things that are in various states of disrepair in a 345-year-old town. Um, you know, not obviously all of these systems are that old, but what I'm getting at is, you know, there is a lot. Um, and that's why these big numbers that you see are, are so big. Um, so, you know, one thing that we haven't really dug into, and hopefully there'll be, you know, grants for this type of stuff, especially, you know, the CZM grant that we just did, but um, the seawalls. Um, you know, we have some seawalls that need to be maintained and restored. We have some that probably need to be built uh, that, you know, need to be big. This is not in any of that programming that we just talked. About. So these are other things that um, should be top of mind, but I, I can't give you a number. I can't tell you what the, you know, what we're going to be doing, but you know, these are things that we get calls, uh, you know, after every storm, uh, you know, especially Ocean Street, but, you know, definitely Sinky Beach, uh, the revetment, we've been working on that, you know, three or four times since I've been here. Um, so you know, it doesn't end. I can tell you the one on Bennett Street doesn't look good. That's not even that on your list. That might be state. <laughs> if, oh, really? If on the bridge street side. So. No, it goes down there. Well, yeah, that, that'll probably. Yeah. Doesn't look very good. So, there, so there's, you know, that type of infrastructure that we haven't even talked about under the amenities. You know, we get numbers on that. How do we get information so that we have I mean, a long-term plan like instead of what? I'll get there. Oh, okay. Sorry. So this, this is just organizational. Yeah, okay. just, just trying to. Okay. You know, so, you know, not that I have them, but you know, we we have an idea. Okay. Um, so then, you know, there's other things under amenities that, like I said, you know, some of these things are already kind of in the pipeline. We've already done the pine tree field. That you know that will be done. Uh, we we still have to maintain it. Uh, but then you know there's other things. Sweeney Field is on the horizon. Uh, that's a big number. Uh, you know, not relative to the 25 million for PFAS, but you know it's a big number for for town. Uh, um, there's other harbor uh, infrastructure, you know, Bayon has a very good handle on that, and, you know, has a lot of access to, you know, grant funding for that stuff, but you know, that's something that you know, we, we handle. Um, cemetery expansions, we just finished a small one on Pleasant Grove, but that's not going to, that's going to be, <laughs> it might not be filled up soon, but it will be sold off soon, that way. Um, so, you know, this is another thing that, you know, we have a cemetery report in hand, that identifies some ideas, but they're not great. Um, so that's going to be another thing that you know, needs to get drilled down on. Then we have the facilities, which we touch on in the facility master plan, but there are other things that we still have to maintain and you know should be on our horizon for you know just you know general maintenance. Uh, you know, the roof at the tower house is on the you know that's going to be funded soon, but you know that's another probably twenty year thing that will need to be replaced. Um, so we haven't even talked about Seaside One. I think. To answer Kathy's question, I think you know there are programming right now at Seaside One that would come over to Town Hall, stuff like that in the future. Um, so then we don't have to maintain that office space at Seaside One, which is actually pretty expensive office space when we talk about the HVAC that we keep needing to replace and do things with, uh, you know, other you know utility issues that we've had at that uh, spot. <laughs> These are other things that we that we thought about in terms of that stuff. So I'll leave leave it at. That, I guess for here, I think that's the end. So that that kind of brings me to the end of that presentation. But what I did want to you know, get into Sarah's point. Um, let's see if I can show you. 
Um, so this is kind of where I've started to answer those questions. Um, you see, I, I did go back and sorry, that's horrible to look at. I'll, if I zoom in, it gets too, you know, can't see the whole thing. Uh, but you can't read it if I zoom out, I guess. Um, so, you know, I have previous appropriations, the work that we've been doing done, you know, a, a roadway, you know, so that's, that's kind of looking back. Um, but then you start getting, you know, scrolling down, we have those same capital subtypes that you saw in the last slide. And then we have it by water, sewer, stormwater. We haven't even really talked about the drainage, you know, just in the street drainage that we have issues with. We have additional culverts after Central Street that need to come up. Uh, so we have started applying numbers. We do have studies that have some of these numbers. Um, but as you saw from those last slides, this is a long list. So this, this is the working side of what you presented. Ex exactly. Yep. So, you know, I would not take these numbers to the bank. These are, you know, moving targets, um, but these are things that we have thought about and we have tried to put into a plan. But, you know, you guys tell me, where do I start on this plan? So uh, if you, yeah. oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I can't read it, but if you had priority columns and then, and then basically a year column and you sorted it by priority and then sorted by, what seemed to be efficient to do it over a yearly period, you would essentially have a spending curve. And then you could spread it out. You could extend it out or back. And obviously the first cut would probably come from you, Chuck, because you know how some of these things get grouped together, maybe their level of urgency. But I don't know. I mean, if you start taking these and order them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to the end, and put a Priority one on some of them, priority five on would be nice later on on some of them. Yeah, that, yeah. that would be helpful, I would think, for us to understand. That's the type of information we need. Andy may help be able to help you distill it a little in order to come up with the annual capital plan spend so that we have a better feel for what we need that annual amount to be and have a plan of saying, you know, X million a year for, you know, Where so that, bonding needs to be done. yeah, um, because it's, it's, you know, we keep, we keep authorizing money in the capital plan for pipes and water, you know, but we have no clue how far along we are, how much needs to be done, what's the timeline within which it really so, should be done, that so, sort of thing. Me. So, so yeah. So, I talked about a few things. Okay. Yeah. Are we or what? Yep. Are we? The good thing is, a lot of the foundational work is is there, and um, it's your point. How it gets laid out, some of that is uh, decisions that are made by, by the town council. Where it needs to be agreed upon priority for all those things. I think, you know, part of the, you know, the way I interpret it, and tell me if I'm wrong, Chuck, uh, something like this facilities master plan, it's intended to kind of drum up figures for like all the different things that we're looking at. That doesn't mean that we're going to do those things. Or all of them. If there's some that we have to do, there's some that seem nice, nice mm -hmm. amounts. Um, so, you know, that prioritization process, I think, you know, some stuff will, will fall out, um, and, uh, and some timelines will start to present themselves. So, I mean, just to kind of touch on, I think what you're asking for, Sarah, is, um, you know, this, this is the map that I bring to all these meetings where it's the red pipe map where all the red pipe on this map was, I apologize if it's hard to see, I'll zoom in again, but it, it gets too small, but, um, uh, I guess what we're trying to show here is, you know, you can tell the blue, that's School Street. That's where we've done, we've done that work. You know, we did Ocean Street Pipeline. We did, you know, all these other blue areas. But that blue is not that much when you look at it. And so I actually did crunch these numbers and I mentioned it to Andy, but, um, you know, in the last five years, we've done about 17,400 feet of pipe. That's what you see in the blue. Uh, that was an approximate cost of four and a half million. So, Anybody wants to guess on how much pipe we have left? <laughs> we have 125,000 of that same vintage red pipe. So 125,000, this is where you get into that number times the average cost per foot right now is around 300. Um, 
300 bucks a foot, um, you know, we're looking at $37 million. So that's kind of the backlog of pipe that we still have after spending the four and a half. That's, that's the level of scale we're looking at. And that's just the water pipe. We, you know, the sewer is in good shape, but we're going to have to keep maintaining the sewer over the next 20 years. That's not going to stop. We are still going to have roadway projects that pop up. And so that's you know, what I'm trying to get across is, you know, I, I feel like that train has started. <laughs> we have these other trains that are, you know, want to come in and we got to you know, kind of get them going as well. So I think that's what you're, you're talking about, but that's the, you know, that's the idea. So on the piping front, I mean, it's been a great effort and it seems to be a good balance between what the town can absorb in a given year and what you can muster up and do. If you keep, it sounds like if you keep going at the current rate, we got about another 35 years of doing this or just whittling away, you know, but like prioritize what's away. Leaking, like it's not just age, it's what's leaking and what breaks, right? Would that be the... Yeah, and so that's that's what we prioritize so far. Um, you know, the, the leaks are, you know, talk on wood. You know, we, we, we're doing good on breaks. We don't have breaks as often as we used to. There's one on beach, and there's um, one on summer, I think. I haven't seen one in Central not, Square. Not, not, in, in, not in the last, like, like... I don't think it's been 12 months, but it you know, it's been a solid eight or nine months, I think. Since yeah, we've been, no, right. Um, so you, I mean, they used to be so we you know, once a month. Once a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that um, was so, you know, that, you know, that was, that was good. Um, you know, the background of my uh, presentation there, I don't know if Ori noticed it, but it was the pipe that we've been replacing, which is, you know, that's what that red pipe is. It's all like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then I guess the other kind of thing, Sarah, that you mentioned was, you know, the, the prioritization also sometimes gets put for us. So like the Pleasant Street thing, you know, that was kind of you know a nice to have, but then it was all right. Well, I really need to pave it because we're going to make it a detour. We have this extra window. Uh, we want to get that work done. Uh, but then now it's we're also going to be doing another pipe in that road. So it's I'm going to do I want to do them both. I don't want to yeah, do it again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it you know it makes sense to get it all done, and then I'm not there for the next 25 years longer. Um, so that's that's how I think about it, and that's you know a uh, part of it. Um, so some of these are. Projects of necessity, some are of you know kind of opportunity. Um, I one other quick item, uh, you know, one of these is uh, in this dash line here is this is the pipeline that we're going to uh, hopefully replace as part of a grant uh, to service CST's location. So that's another one that we're it's not on our list right now, but it was you know, certainly part of that red pipe map, and it's going to be you know. Four or five million dollar project by the time we get done paving the whole thing. Um, so, that's the Mass Works grant. Yeah, so that's the Mass Works grant that we're on. And so again, that wasn't on my short list of you know I don't really it's not a lot of residents out on Forest Street that I'm worried about the you know the water pressure or the you know the breaking that we we had. Um, but you know, we get it done, we get it done, and you know if we don't spend three hundred bucks a foot, then great. Yeah. And that's 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 a project that then kind of feeds into determining the house. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> uh, is the facilities plan, is that going to give us any kind of a prioritization, which I think is pretty critical in this discussion? Yeah, or so is it, they're just going to say, Here, here's where you need to do work. <laughs> so it's, it's not necessarily a prioritization because, like I said, there was no, there wasn't a lot of alternatives. So it's, it's a roadmap. It doesn't have to be exactly what we follow, but it's a roadmap to address the short-term issues and the long-term. All right, well, short-term and long-term is, is kind of like well, that, short-term. But, well, like it, I said, but does it deal with useful life, maybe? I, yeah, so that, that was part of the thought process, but you know, to be honest with you, the, the existing age of the you know, facilities you know, at the top of that list, you know, there, there's no useful life left. Um, you know, the ones that do have useful life left, they don't really want to move. So like the library, they don't, they don't want to move. They don't need to move. Um, so stuff like that. Um, you know, it's not, I'll sell it short, but it's not rocket science. Like there's certain things that need, and there are certain things that are okay looking at all of it. But just to be clear, the, so the study does look at the condition of each. Yeah. Um, yep. the yeah. Of that, you know, the process of implementation. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it's up to us to then you know, determine that. 
So, so would you give us priorities, uh, kind of, I don't know, rank them one to five or something. And there's also going to be a category could be done whenever it's an amenity type of item that, you know, if the town really wants this, we've got to, we've got to decide when we're going to do it, but it doesn't necessarily have a, a must have time tied like the sewer system, like the pipes. And I think you're probably going about as fast as you can, because you can't close every road in town and do it all in one shot. You got to well, do, you know, like I, do, I do think about that quite a bit. And, you know, there are, uh, there are you know, certainly priorities that I have for you know, leading into other work. So Pleasant Street, definitely, you know, that's, that's going to be disrupted. But there are a lot of uh, projects that I think I see on the horizon that aren't as disruptive. Um, so, you know, we could, and actually, you'd have, a, I didn't get to the bottom of my spreadsheet, but believe it or not, there is uh, more. Um, So, you know, we keep going down to the bottom here. And then I started to try and lay out, you know, kind of the, the what you're asking, the, what is the water and, you know, so these are the, you know, projects I was talking about pending work. So we have Florence <laughs> Mill as part of the CST. So that's, you know, definitely on the short terms. We have Pleasant Street, which we're, we're at that, you know, kind of juncture right now. Mm -hmm. um, Chapman Street is one that we've actually put out to bid before where you know, that's not gonna disrupt all of town. Certainly it'll be disruptive for the neighbors and we'll do everything we can to you know, alleviate that, but you know, it's part like of the work. Um, the, yeah, it's not like school trade, it's not like Pleasant Street would be. Um, you know, Bennett Street is another one where you know, that's not um, you know, a critical loop, it's not breaking right now, but I do see a need to you know, do that road before. Can I say this, please take the, other the joke that, uh, you know, <laughs> there are certain people I think would appreciate the roadway. Uh, on Bennett Street being a better area, but that, that's not that, like it, it, need, it needs to be done. Um, you know, I'm not trying to do anything. And then the, these other ones are, you know, not really in my control. So Summer Street is very critical to all of uh, East Manchester, but I can't get in that road right now because the state just paved it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going on four or five years ago, but you know, <laughs> we don't want to get in there right now. But I can see, you know, in a couple of years when the dust kind of settles on Pleasant Street and Forest and Mill. That, you know, that's another big one. So uh, I guess I have to scroll over so you can see the numbers. But it's fine. Uh, so, you know, these are 5 million is the CST number, the MassWorks number. So, you know, generally okay with that. Pleasant Street. Uh, now, on that, that CST one, they would pay for any overage? So there's no formal agreement, but that's been the, the what the discussion has been. Yeah. Um, okay. But, um, you know, and then there, there are probably will I will need to direct some town funds to where they're not doing that. So, like for example, they were planning on paving wherever they put in uh, pipe on forest and mill, but they're not going all the way from mill to school. So that last yeah. little section, yeah. I'm going to need to do, and that'll probably be town. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so you know, you so some of these are what I'm getting at are, are not so big that we couldn't take on a couple. So you know, this is. Uh, you know, the, the Bennett and Tappan type thing. Uh, you know, when we get down to these neighborhood streets uh, down here, you know, maybe some of those, although Norwood Ave is very long, which uh, yeah. start looking at. Um, so, you know, th so these are kind of my short list that I'm working off of for that annual appropriation that we've been spending. Not, that's outside of, you know, if we're doing a $10 million pipeline from Lincoln Street to, you know, Gravely Pond, that's different back story. Um, but you know, so that's how I've been looking at it. That's the numbers that I'm looking at, and you know, I don't see any reason why we can't you know group some of these together. But others, you know, will need to be uh, taken on kind of you know, multi phase. Um, so that 3.9 number you're looking at, that's summer street. It's just so long, but it's so critical. You know, that's that's just water main because we're not necessarily going to pave the entire road. Um, but so you know, I could see that being a three year project if we want. Um, it doesn't have to be. Uh, all four million at once. What percentage of this so, is materials versus labor? Materials are pretty minimal, or is it significant? Well, so like for instance, when we do cleaning lining, which is what Summer Street would be, what School Street would be, mm -hmm. that's almost no material. That's just the time and effort of cleaning and grinding. So that's more material based. But so my three hundred number that I'm looking at, that's all the work that we've done to date, five years average. Um, so you know that seventeen. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that that number includes some lining, school street, 
but also some replace Park Street, some replace Ocean Street. So like it's it's a good mixed number. Some some not all roads are created equal. So you know, like I said, the, the difference between labor and materials you know fluctuates, but that's that's the idea. Are you looking more towards relining now than you used to? Are you trying to reline in that? So you know that 1890s pig iron is very thick. So okay. yes, we can yeah. line it in most instances. <clears throat> Cabin, not going to realize that one because it's too much in the ocean. Yeah. Um, you know, even though it's not in the ocean, it has potential impact there. So that will be a replace yep. or an alternative line. Um, so it's, it's case by case, but you know, it definitely is something we can see. As some of these bigger projects start to wind Yeah, so I, I was actually joking when I said that, but it has been something that Nate and I have talked about is that if we get to a point where we're doing a $5 million culvert project, a $4 million upgrade at the uh, wastewater plant, and we're doing embarking on a $25 million PFAS effort, we're probably going to need to expect to pay a lot in you know consultant fees or put another person on the books um, to you know look out for town interest while we're conducting that work because it will be it will be a big ticket. Is Nate had his baby yet? Parker. Parker Ross Robert Dorogan. <laughs> Let's get there. <laughs> <laughs> My experience is that oversight pays for itself. <clears throat> so, a lot of figures, a lot of big ticket items. Uh, on, on a more positive note, um, in terms of revenues, um, we're not there yet, but in the early 30s, we do retire significant expenses. Um, on, on, um, retirement system liability should be completely handled. The OPEB should be completely funded. So those are two items right there. That's close to $2 million on an annual basis. So that that's borrowing power, if you will. School um, debt rolls off. School debt rolls off. All the other town debt that we currently have rolls off. Um, but that's, that's eight. Eight or so years from now, <laughs> so we're not there yet. Um, you know, the CST project will be a significant addition to the to the tax revenues. And that's like twenty six. So that yeah, that's three years away. Yeah. So th there are some <laughs> there are some bright spots in terms of revenue streams and being able to. Try to pay for some of the stuff without just hitting taxpayers' pocket more and more each time. But it's a significant challenge. No question about it. And I think, Chuck, one of the things that I think would be helpful to us as we go into the budget season is um, a, a fleet replacement program. We have it for police, I believe, and I think fire is working on it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's something we'd like to see. Usually I keep that for like five years because it's not Just so that we, you know, because we spend a lot of money on DPW trucks over a couple of year time. Obviously, there hadn't been a plan in place. <laughs> To adequately yeah, so like my, um, replace them. And so we had a whole bunch that hit us at once, it seemed to me, more than normal. So, yeah, I'll have that. maybe to your point, I know you run the analysis probably, but you talked about the pole barn, didn't do it because of maybe moving the site on and on. But at some point, the degradation of the equipment goes faster than putting up a pole wow. barn, even if you know you're going to tear it down in three yeah. years or five years. But yeah, I mean, so the, the idea was it would be a structure that would be moved out. The problem is, will the footprint fit the existing footprint in the future uh, location? Um, so, I guess, think about it. 
I guess the other kind of point of clarity, I guess I needed right now, and Andy mentioned it a little bit is, you know, so we, we, are, we do have 1.8 million right now uh, that was approved at town meeting. Um, it's just up in that list. I mean, I'm not trying to source out, we, that money will go somewhere. Um, I don't, I have several, you know, things that I could do. Um, you know, we have um, other pipeline, obviously that could go. Um, the one actually that I'm most interested in doing immediately would be Walker Road, which is right next to Pleasant Street. Um, that wouldn't be a one point eight million dollar job, but it would be significant. Um, and then the other thing is all these different pieces of the PFAS puzzle that we need to answer would be part of that. Uh, there's also items that we need to do at the treatment plant itself. So one of the things that we need to do is replace the media and the inner parts of the existing filters. Um, we are actually looking at converting some of the filter media into an activated carbon so that we can evaluate how good activated carbon works on our water. So the, like these are things that are you know, not part of the you know, current plan, but are now things that you know, are lending themselves to answering these questions sooner rather. Mm -hmm. so, you want to give me five minutes? I can give it to you. Well, we're we're not, not, well, we're not, I can all, all right. We don't need it now. Yeah, we just need it for the upcoming ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, but well, so what I'm asking trying is to spend the right existing money. Uh, exactly. We can yeah. do it at the special town meeting if there's. No, we don't need to go before. I mean, yeah, from, from my point of view, I don't think you know this is something we've done in the past. Is you know, when there's you know, leftover it's water fund, they get spent process. on the next water. We told town meeting it's going to be pleasant streets. Right. I can't remember how is it worded on the um warrant. It wasn't well was what wasn't it what is it? Water pipes and water pipe replacement. Yeah, so it needs to be water pipe replacement. I don't think you could use it for media at the treatment was, plant. Um well, there was another one. Yeah, we have, we have yeah. general plan yeah. upgrades as well. So like it would be yeah. coming yeah. from yeah. both buckets. It was more of a plan for different things. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's some of it's infrastructure, but some of it's like work on you know, evaluating the pipeline that we'll need and stuff like that. So it's it's still within what you know, we've done in the past. It's just want to be up front. Can I spend that money? Yeah. I'm going to need more money for Pleasant Street later, but we need to, you know, my opinion, keep this going. Well, I think Land Andy, Landy, Andy Sidley is on. So I think that if you have ideas of how you're going to spend that 1.8 million, that uh, yeah. Discuss it with Andy, and then he can bring it to the, the committee, just so that we know what's going on. Yeah, I'm not going to go If you don't mind doing that, yeah. I mean, I just think um, it's more that it's sometimes embarrassing when we when we say something to people that this money is for Pleasant Street, and then it's going to be spent on something else, and we don't have a clue what is being spent on. That's well, that's why what I, I was thinking that my gut after hearing all this is the most efficient expenditure would be the wastewater treatment. We can't good. use that money for wastewater treatment. If we have put it the ship to the special town meeting. Um, but then that, that means I don't do any water work. Yeah, I think that's okay. yeah, I think I think that's three or four million at one point. Right. So that's like another. There would be another. That would be FY twenty five. And I think sitting here as a layperson, learning, hearing more about the PFAS problem, that that sounds like a can that could probably kind of roll down the road a little bit until EPA and others solidify their numbers. And um, who knows? Four may go to eighteen. You know, people start screaming. Four may go to two. Who knows? Three years go to ten years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so uh, that seems like to be determined. And um, I would say focus on the things that are right here and right now. That number is going to go up, whatever it is right now, in terms of what, what was it, four million this year? Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Uh, you know, the 1.8 million is not making a dent in the 25 million. No. It's just laying the groundwork for other things that will happen eventually. Um, regardless, like we need we need to do the filter media no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, so it would just get that out of the way before it's a part of a 25 million project. I, I, I the more we have 
analyzed and looked at design work, the better position we are to receive some of this litigation. So there is a there is some sense to keep moving on. Where's the litigation money coming from? Is it local or is it the state no, or national? National asset yeah. So 3 3M has tentatively agreed to a $13 billion fund. So that'll get divvied up. But that's a lot of time. But that's it's not the whole country. Like Chuck said, it's not going to be $20 million. Check the rate of being on for years. I'd like to have a contract account have that. Yeah. What is um what's the prevailing science set about what they might want to this um I presume what's on the channel one. I think this is like asking about more fire hose. Everybody's kind of there, yeah. Every, everyone but, but, is but the idea of, of like hoping that the echo I think I think that course is left like it's not going to go lower or it's not going to go higher than that's going to be lower than Massachusetts. Oh, I think oh yeah, it'll be lower than that. It'll be lower than Massachusetts. Yes, yeah. I think it could change. There's too much pushback across the country. Yeah. No, I mean, stranger things have happened. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think these numbers sound like some communities, if they don't bond or are unable to bond, they're, they're going to go into the red. I mean, dealing with this problem. Yeah. And this is not another fire truck or something. This is like yeah. huge costs for, I mean, think about well, well, Springfield, yeah. Lemonster. Yeah, we're small. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about these other places. Yeah. This, this, is, this is national. I mean, this I is saw, really going to be interesting where it goes. I saw that there were a couple of projects that are heard now. Pretty nice. no, that one, but, uh, there, there are projects. Air. Um, they're both the, the ones that are near Air Force bases. Yeah, yeah, airports, 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 stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of the system. Like, there's not a new problem. They it's the state, so they have to treat. No, uh, so they are ahead. Yeah, they're over 20. Right? I don't yeah. want to uh, keep realist to go too far down the rabbit hole on PFAS, but. We, we are also going to be starting testing for PFAS at the wastewater plant. So that's a potential on the horizon that we have. It's not in my through from. Um, there's certainly PFAS at you know, our landfill and certain other areas where you know it may be determined that we have to remediate. So like this is this is not a you know, new, this is not going away just when we get done with the water. Either. Well, I'm not going to worry about stuff that's acid that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wastewater treatment plant is getting the water that's coming from the uh, water. Yeah, so so obviously, it has to be that. Right? Yeah, it's got to be yeah. correlation. No chance. <laughs> yeah, for every chemical, they're not and they're not treated biologically in our wastewater. Yeah. 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 So, Greg, you and Chuck have probably figured out some threshold level of investment or whatever this needed to remain viable for litigation coming along. I mean, do you have a sense of? How much the town needs to be doing to, to be in that game as a reasonable player, or is it twenty k a year or two hundred k a year or what? But presumably you've got some sense of. Well, we need to keep. Well, so we need obviously we need to keep testing, which yep. we have to do anyways. Um, but we need to advance the design work so that we have credible numbers to say it's going to cost. You know, is, is the twenty five million a credible number? We need to demonstrate that that's a credible, credible number. It's not that it can't change, but it just well, it's progress. Okay. So it behooves us to, to do some of the, the design, like the testing, mm -hmm. um, the pilot runs, so that we can be in good position. Uh, any more questions for Chuck? Thank you. Thank you.
next item on the agenda is town administrative, town and count and financial updates. Are there any updates that we need to hear tonight? Uh, no, so we don't have the books closed. We're still okay. doing that. Uh, so I think uh you by the way. I don't know why you will certainly have no choice. Okay. The, the good talk is good. Okay. 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 Um, Andrea did send me an email today on information she got on reserves, but I didn't think we would discuss it today, that we need to put it on the agenda for another meeting, and I'll forward you the email she sent. It's silly what we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, liaisons. Any updates? I guess you've done yours, Andy. <laughs> More um, so I printed out the, the report, which I could read or we could distribute. I don't know what's the. It's distributed. Just a few highlights. Yeah, it's on the schools. Yeah, schools. Just, just a few highlights. I just so, in, in the standard way of the summary. Yeah. So the school. So. Basically, Sarah and I and Greg um, and Ann Harrison went to the last meeting, and there's a fair amount of discussion about um, transparency, fair amount of discussion about the role of the collaboration meetings going forward. Um, I think a lot of this evolved out of last year and um, moving through the process pretty smoothly up through about January and then some hiccups along the way. And then, of course, we ended up with two town meetings. So um, there's there is an effort to document very carefully um, each of the meetings that happen with the collaboration, have the group basically at the time of the meeting pretty much approve the minutes and then they get distributed. To them. So there is a bit of a trade off here because um, these meetings, I think, are really valuable for um, talking about things. Um, running scenarios, thinking about um, budgets, thinking about uh, there's a lot of stuff that is personal and um, to the school system, particularly with people, um, things like that, that um, sometimes gets talked about and may not be able to be talked about in the future. So I think this group's trying to find its, find its way. And um, there'll be more meetings soon. And um, documents coming out of the meetings. So, I don't know, Sarah, if I've hit it, or Greg, if you have other things to add. I think that one of the discussions had in the collaboration meeting is do you have public meetings or do you keep it going? And because, yeah, and because of the, in order to have people be more frank, it makes sense to keep them private, but then have written summaries come out after each meeting of the highlights of what's discussed so people can understand what was discussed yeah yeah um, you know so that's kind of part of the discussion exactly. that, uh, and then, then there was talk about um whether it's three or four uh, group meetings that are public or we call them the quintuplet meeting because of the, the five different entities. So right? you got oh. you got two pin comms, yeah. two two collect boards, oh, and sorry. the school committee. So that's the five entities. And so would it make sense to get those five entities together um, early in the fall, you know, say October-ish time frame, um, uh, to prior to the real hard budget work, and then another session maybe right before. The school committees voting on their final budget, and then maybe there's another one either right before or right after the town meetings. Um, so that that all five entities can can hear from each other what the uh, what their thoughts are in terms of budgeting and, and the future, and what the, what's the appetite for different levels of funding. By from all patients from the, from the school, it's, it's 
not going to do that much. Our question, more pressing, is like I was under the impression that we were going to have a new field for this fall, and it hasn't started yet. Oh, we got an update on that. Um, yeah, I, that. so they're still on. They, they slipped about a week. That's not much. So they they are planning still to have those fields ready this fall by, so, by the opening of school. Well, so the the one. Yeah. The Highland Field is going to be done by August 31st. Wow. So it can and go Brook yeah. Street yeah. by September 30th or something, 29th. They are still testing the the the, the, the oh, turf no, itself has passed P, PFAS testing. Yeah. But they're still testing whatever's underneath it and right. the company's being slow. Okay. So but that's been the delay. Track. Yeah. Avi seemed to be pretty confident that yeah, it, not, you know, he's frustrated with the delay, but yeah. he doesn't think it's fatal. They wanted to get the Highland field open by August 15th, which is when they start practices. Right. And they're not going to make that, but it will be. So what they've done, what they've done to the schedule is said their previous plan was to start Brook Street before they finished Highland. But now they're not going to start Brook Street until Highland's completed so they can practice on that Brook Street. Yeah, they to... But they're still going to meet the overall end date. Yeah, so, so that's where that came. CPC? Yeah. They're chomping at the bit to go to 3%. <laughs> uh, I told them we had discussed that at one of our meetings and that the criteria was looking at the restrictions on its use versus um, the amount of state match for incentive. Um, I believe that was correct. And um, um, Jack was gonna get back to me with all the, you know, what the state match matches were so we could have some specific numbers on that. And um, there'll be a, a meeting in August where we're gonna start coming up with a list of projects. So, you know, I, I wouldn't think it's short term, but it's like over a long term that you'd want to see the uses, the need. Yeah, I, my concern is it seems so heavily weighted towards parks and rec. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know whether it's better just to have it hit the regular tax rate. People vote that. Right. That's so, what then it through is. CPC, so, but they, they are getting ready to ask for another increase, but that's coming. Uh, and then the other uh, issue that they were concerned about, the projects that they have done have not been well maintained. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear up to date on some. So for fire, I thought we were going to have a conversation about standardizing some of these questions. Yeah. I was more thinking about it for those things that were considered on the topic. Yeah, but I thought we had had a conversation about trying to standardize some of the liaison's questions for everybody, but I guess I'm confused. I mean, I think that with fire, there certainly is a discussion to be had with, with the new fire chief regarding his position on calling firefighters and whether he thinks it's feasible. Um, you know, that's kind of my viewpoint. And also to get the apparatus plan from him. The last, ap the last apparatus plan we had was from Cleary. It seems like we need something from this chief before we start the budget cycle to understand where he's coming from. I think I saw something that he might want. Well, I'm happy to this person. Yeah, because I, I, I think I saw something on the in the select board meeting packet about um, the apparatus for the second backup ambulance and maybe whatever the current plan is. He didn't particularly support and felt maybe they need it. I don't know. This pickup truck, I don't know, something, some other type of incident, uh, 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 not the cost of an ambulance, uh, no reasonable, but 
We did provide uh, the select board with a, a report. It's a very, very nice report. And there was one section, I just can't remember what it was. Yeah. Right yeah. And an ambulance was out of the top. So, yes, I think maybe it's in the report. Yeah, it's on, it's on the, meet, the select board meeting package from their last meeting. Right. Would it be possible to see that? I was just going to say, is that yeah. online? It's, it's, it's online. online. Yeah. Exactly. You, that would be helpful. Helpful. And then it's also, yeah. We can also send it to you. There was also an update um, from the police chief, which addressed uh, service on the water and the staffing implications of the additional staffing. That's because I think that's something that we as a the ask is. All of the additional funding we've given some of these departments to say, okay, is it working? Um, you know, is it satisfying your needs, or are there going to be other needs just to kind of get a better sense of it? Getting back to the fire, one of the things I was wondering is whether the new dispatch system, if we have increased ambulance use, and whether that use still triggers overtime. You know, because you know, it, it seemed like Every time an ambulance went out, they would have another car go out and they'd have to call someone right. in. So, so I guess the question to ask the fire chief is with the additional staffing, is that Remedy, no is that time. yeah helping is that reducing the amount of overtime that's being used? I think they just yes. okay, so, it's just picked in. Yeah, I think they just graduated right. three good. of them. Yeah, yeah, just graduated. But um, it'd be interesting to get his philosophy on that. Sure. Yeah. This one page report that he that you're going to get that uh, yeah. Ray Wilson, he is planning to put that together every month, and that overtime number is on. Okay. Monthly. This is what we spent. So you might ask him to send it to the finance. Send it to you for finance. And uh, so, so we do push our our chief is in this position. I, I guess I'd be interested to sort of track where the morale of the department is and how it's progressing. Is it sort of not very good? Not very good. <laughs> Question just circling back to parks and racks because of the CPC. Um, we have talked in the past about that possibly being an enterprise fund. And can you just remind us maybe why that should be a good idea or is a good idea or is it are there benefits to parks and rec being an enterprise? Or is this, is, can it not carry its momentum with revenues and expenses? Town loses control. So the, so the beach generates a lot of revenue. So that does flow into the general fund now. If you created Parking Act as an enterprise, that would not help. Okay. That's, the so that's, <laughs> that's the perfect answer. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> Anything else on liaisons? Did we help you at all, Tom? Um, yes. Okay. At my time. <laughs> um, review and approve the minutes. I sent updates to Right. I had sent them before and didn't have any objections. Did anybody look at the minutes? Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. I had emailed them again last night. Yeah. We got them Tuesday. I, I sent them back Tuesday night. Yeah. I know there's a push to get them out quick. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Yes. So are people good with these minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have um, June 20th and July 12th. So I have a motion to approve the minutes for June 20th and 
in July 21st. Yes. Second. 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 Any seconds? Um, Oh, go, go, morning. So I'm going to vote for June 20th and abstain from the 12th because it's okay. Tom, yes, yes, Steve, Andy, go ahead. and Sarah votes yes. So we're up to date on minutes. Okay, next meeting. Just to remind, refresh people when it is August 9th. <laughs> um. Yeah, so what do we want to discuss the next meeting? Do we want to do we want to circle back around on the reserves? Because Andrea did give us information. So yeah, push that along one way, one way or the other. Yeah, because it's going to impact. Okay. Yeah. Is that all? A, is that a is that a, a, a select board decision or how, how does that happen? Is that it's, a, a, it's a recommendation from, yeah. from yeah. you yeah. to to the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Do we want to spend more time on? The capital side. Is that premature? Well, I, I think that what we need to understand is all the work that needs to be done and come up with a recommendation regarding how much we should be spending on various capital items. Yeah. Yeah. So the stuff is going to be the end of August. When's the stay? It'll be the end of August. Okay. We'll have to see what we plan. So in some sense, I feel like we should pay. Okay. Okay. Finds what the study is going to comment on that are our capital items. Uh, so. Uh, Okay. Okay. And see if we can get a better understanding of the overall yeah. water mm -hmm. water pipe and sewer treatment plant yeah. stuff. Maybe also just have a running list in front of us of storage money. Yes, that's the other thing. Sure. Yes. Yeah. That whole bar. <laughs> Sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> um, and do we have that issue in other departments too, or is it just is mostly DP? No, we have all of those those that list yeah. that Andrea gave us. That we should look at. Yeah. Um, okay, Andrea's. Um, Is there anything else you'd be like liking us to look at at this point, Fred? Um, so, you know, in terms of staffing, mm -hmm. you know, at this stage, or we'll wait a bit on that. But that, um, I think the biggest, the two biggest needs are from for. Both in fire and in part of the deputy positions. So, so those are an additional, or is that like convergence? That would be additional. Well, fire is certainly additional. In, in harbor, it would take the place for some of the part timers. Okay, I remember that discussion. So, there is an assistant now, deputy assistant. Not full time. So it would be a couple of to bring them on full time. There are seven. Yeah. yeah. So do we want to do that at the second meeting in August 23rd?
And I think at that, um, we should have updates. The liaison should get updates from police and fire regarding how the staffing approved last year is working out. I mean, for police, I'd love to know how the safe are lives, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I can certainly give you. Yeah. So I think I'm just to better understand what we're looking at. And are you looking at changes in town within town hall? Um, no, not really. Okay. Okay. We, we are. We do have a um, uh, study getting a little conversation study right, yeah. with the department heads, and that'll take a look at. Um, um, we hired somebody in the treasurer's office yet? It's a good candidates. They've, they've done one round of interviews. Just advertising for every full time plan. Okay. Is, is the compensation study because we're losing people to other towns? Are not paying? Uh, no, we're just, I just want to verify. We, we so did one a number of, what, five years ago did you do one or so? When, and we found that we were under on some of the director right. positions. And we did, we did some adjustments well, over three, three years, years or something. I don't know. Yeah. Could have been 10 years ago we did this stuff. <laughs> so is it just on compensation or is it also on responsibilities and skill sets? Well, it takes it tries to, yeah, it looks at a job description and right. making sure that we're comparing apples to apples. Right. Yeah. So when's that going to be done? It'll be done in September. Okay. I mean, one of the questions might be is is the job description appropriate for where the town is going? Right. For this discussion tonight. <laughs> you know, there may be more skills needed than we currently have in certain town departments. Okay. Are you finding people you need? Are you getting candidates for positions? Are you finding that challenging? Well, so we, did, we had a good pool for the library, library director, so we're encouraged there. Mm -hmm. um, too early to tell on the plan. I'm, I'm very nervous about that. I've heard from other towns that they've been looking for quite a while, I mean, like over a year. My concern is we might have a reputation too. No. So, um, so I, I'm nervous about that. We'll see. And the person there is finishing or still part time? So our interim is, is limited. So she's before we retired. Okay. She's on a pension, so she's limited for the number of hours she can work. Yeah, I would love to have her. Yeah, I'd well, love, love to have her full time. Um, that's uh, not, it's not an option. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, she's she really would like to retire. I think. Yeah. Um, but she she might stay on if we if we find another part time person. Mm -hmm. If we have two part time people, that's mm -hmm. not ideal. But it's it's better than better not having anybody, right? right. So, and, and Betsy's very good. So. Well, and she could mentor some of the Exactly. Yeah. less experience. I, I think she would enjoy her. Her son, which would be good. Yeah. Give you more flexibility. Right. So, we'll have to see. So that's another part of the public address type of housing. Right, to keep the 10% safe harbor in there. How that's going. I know they had a consultant that was going to repackage something. An RFQ went out um, on August 12th, I believe, and July. I believe, oh, July 12th, 
and I believe the response is due the maybe end, towards the end of August. Yeah. Um, to say because two RF, RFPs went out with no response. Um, and so this is trying to work with the developer to determine what would be in the RFQ. But if if we're talking about using Pleasant Street for public safety, that puts the just housing community project. Yeah, there's one just over the hill. Along that way. <laughs> but it's a state home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's about seven acres. Is it that much? Yeah. It's on a slope. Is that the one on Pine? Or no, that's a different beat. It's it's like um, just before the school street exit on the south side of the road. I think the state had it for a DPW yard. Built as an army. Well, yeah. But it's just sitting there. Like, right along, right along I don't know. Yeah, yes, it's along 128, and you might have to put a driveway through conservation, but it could also it could connect with the planes, which is kind of. So it's off the old Essex Road. Well, yeah, old, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 kind of the backside of Jack. Right. Yeah, the, the, that's a state owned piece of the shop. Well, definitely would. It's a little hilly in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I mean, you look at other towns, and a lot of the affordable housing projects are along railroads and highways. Ways to keep the price down. Check that out for <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was it's on the maps and parcels website right? because I yeah, okay. I came across it when we were looking for alternative field studies. Yeah. Oh. And there was another spot off Old School Street. Yeah, the run, there's a big chunk of town land. Wow. It looked like a good policy <laughs> spot. Right. Because it was relatively flat. There's not a lot like chunks. You don't know much about it. It's it's slim pickings. <laughs> Gotta break up some of the big old estates, but I'm not even sure there's that many with that much money. Yeah. There's a few, but not many. No. Down on Summer Street. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's so, yeah, they just split up two lots. It's been on the market forever. Yeah. Just past the road across. Uh, yes, I know that's uh, Gordon's. Uh... Oh, okay. With that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Andy moves to adjourn. Do I have a second? Maury seconds. Take a vote. Maury. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yes. Andy. And Sarah will chess. Thank you. You two need to be okay. The next one, Tom Snush. Okay. We've been dedicated to put off for some other time. I think tomorrow. Where are you going to be? Plum Alley. No, we won't. That's a different common theme. It is that every year, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I know. Oh, at least me, because they were fine. Oh, she going to probably actually be. I have my plug. Got on the calendar. I mean, that was the half hour. Oh, okay. Fire. She was going for a month. Fire oh. yeah. yeah. swear. That's that's sick. There are most of May is pretty good. Okay. Um, when I missed the last meeting, I was literally like in the land in Labrador, and Labrador uh, was just way out, way out. It's all the really solid. That's kind of expensive to do. Yeah.
always just up in New Brunswick, fly fishing. It's kind of nice to get away from there. Yeah, it's the way way away. No electricity. Yeah. yeah, which is great. Yeah. That's why when I was working, I always used to like to go to Africa. Nobody can reach you yeah. when you're on yeah. safari. <laughs> <Right. laughs> it used to be that way. Well, <laughs> I would. I was driving to um, JJ and Becky's house last night to drop off something. Yeah. And um, got to go over the hill and back up the hill looking at that. Well, the problem is, is is on the west side. It the foundation. I thought it was that odd giant right So much of that foundation is above the Yeah, You know, it's up on that foundation. Okay, fine. And the whole thing looks like.